Fine, so let's, uh, so let's get along with the proof of uh, Montel's theorem. See, so the, the key point that you have to remember is that, you know, uh, the difference between uh, Montel's theorem and the Arzilla Ascoli theorem uh, uh, is that the Arzilla Ascoli theorem is for continuous functions, okay, defined on a compact matrix space. Right, continuous functions, of course, real valued or complex valued. In fact, you can even have continuous functions with values in a compact matrix space. Okay. Whereas the uh, uh, the Montel's theorem is for, of course, it's for analytic functions, and then we are going to extend it to meromorphic functions, and these are going to be defined on domains, okay, uh, which are certainly not compact. Right. So uh, so one one thing that you have to contrast and compare is that the arzilla ascoli theorem as it is is for continuous functions defined on compact matrix space whereas the montel theorem is for analytic functions and later on for meromorphic functions defined on a domain okay so it's not a compact set right it's an open connected set then that's so that's one difference uh, th that's actually two differences the, the domains are different in the, in the Arzela Ascoli theorem, the domain is a compact matrix space. In the Montel theorem, the domain is uh, the, the domain of the function is actually a domain in the complex plane, right? Then the second thing is in the Arzela Ascoli theorem, we are worried about real or complex valued continuous functions, whereas in the Montel theorem, we are worried about analytic functions and later on meromorphic functions. Okay. Then the other important thing is uh, that what is the similarity? The similarity is that both of these theorems tell you when a family of functions is compact. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at it from the viewpoint of the arzela ascoli theorem, compactness uh, is uh, uh, it corresponds to sequential compactness. Okay, and sequential compactness uh is just the condition that given a sequence of functions in the family you are able to extract a convergence of sequence okay and uh, whereas in the montel theorem what will happen is that you will have a normal version of this so the montel theorem will tell you that uh, uh, your given uh, family uh, of functions is compact in the following sense that given a sequence uh, in the family you can extract a subsequence but now this subsequent is not convergent uh, 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 in the in the in the in the in the sense of functions that is it's not uniformly convergent uh, on your domain but it is uniformly convergent only when restricted to compact subsets of the domain that is normal convergence okay so that is the difference the so uh, in the arzela ascoli theorem what you get is uh, convergence with respect to uh, uniform convergence Okay, and that means it's uniform convergence on the whole space. Whereas in the context of the Montel theorem, what you will get is convergence with respect to only compact subsets. That is normal convergence. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the, that is the subtle difference that you have to understand. And uh, the, the 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 whole uh, the, the but the punch line is that in the arzela ascoli theorem, you need for this compactness or sequential compactness, you need uh, the two properties of the uh, for for these fam, uh, functions in the family to satisfy one is uniform boundedness okay the the other one is is uh, equicontinuity all right but this is for continuous functions uh, in the in the arzela ascoli theorem case but if you come to the montel case okay you equicontinuity is free it comes because you are looking at analytic functions because you are looking at analytic functions, uh, you know that the, uh, the, the derivatives of the functions are, uh, uh, ca the, the, the derivatives are expressible using the Cauchy integral formula and then you can estimate uh, the Cauchy, the integrals and therefore you get the uh, so called Cauchy estimates and the Cauchy estimates will tell you automatically that the derivatives are bounded and it is a natural fact that whenever the derivatives are bounded, the original functions are themselves uh, equicontinuous. So equicontinuity comes for free, it comes automatically for if you are looking at analytic functions. But if you are looking at, that, that is in the context of Montel's theorem. But if you are looking at the context of the Arzela-Ascoli theorem, you have to give equicontinuity 
uh, as an extra condition because all you have is continuity to begin with of the functions. Okay, so um, so I was uh, so so let, so let let's uh, so the first point I want to show is that this family I am starting with the domain D in the complex plane and script F is a is a is a family of analytic functions on D. Uh, and uh, it is normally uniformly bounded. So, it is uniformly bounded when restricted to any compact subset of D and I have to show that given a sequence uh, uh, in the family, uh, I must be able to get a subsequence uh, that converges uniformly on compact subsets. Okay? And the first thing I will show is that uh, equicontinuity is automatic. Okay? So, uh, so, for that pick a point uh, is it not belonging to D. Okay? choose uh, rho greater than 0 so that the closed disk uh, centered at z0 radius rho uh, the set of all points in that closed disk uh, is inside D. Okay? You can do this because uh, D is an open set of course I am working with a non-empty open set. Okay? So, D is an open connected set. Uh, so, give me a point of D. Uh, by openness there is always a small disk surrounding that point which is also in D and I can take a smaller disk uh, along with the boundary uh, inside that disk. Okay? So, I can find this row. All right? uh, of course, you know the reason why I am in including the boundary is because I want a compact set. Okay? I, 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 if you take a closed disk it is both closed and bounded so it is compact and then I can use the hypothesis that the family of functions is, is then uniformly bounded on this compact set. Okay? So, uh, 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 let m be a uh, uniform bound uh, for all uh, let m be a uniform bound for all uh, uh, f belonging to script f uh, uh, in, inside uh, 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 mod z minus z naught less than or equal to rho. Okay. So, so, what does this mean? This means that uh, mod f of z uh, is less than or equal to m for all f in script f and uh, for all z with uh, mod z minus z not less than or equal to rho. Okay? And now what we uh, what I sh what I would like to show is that uh, uh, I would like to show that in a smaller disk uh, what happens is if you take a smaller closed disk then the fam family uh, is actually equicontinuous. So, so what I do is I choose a smaller closed disk. So basically, you know, if I draw a diagram, so it's going it's going to be like this. I'm going to have this. Uh, I have I'm going to have this disk centered at z naught, uh, radius rho, and then you know, uh, choose. Now what you do is choose uh, a rho one which is less than rho, uh, 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 a rho one which is positive and less than rho. Okay, so that I can consider the smaller closed disk of radius rho one centered at z naught. Uh, and and look at uh, 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 z in uh, mod z minus z naught less than or equal to rho one. Okay, so so the situation is like this. I, I take a smaller disk, and this length is rho one. Okay, I'm I'm looking at this smaller disk. All right. Uh, now for z prime in in rho in 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 this. I, I, in in this uh, in this smaller closed disk, uh, 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 by the Cauchy integral formula. Well, if you want second Cauchy integral formula, what do you have? Uh, you have uh, if I write it out, I'll get mod. Uh, well, first let me write out the formula. Uh, without worrying about the estimating it, uh, uh, so f dash of uh, f dash of uh, z prime is one by two pi i integral over mod z minus z naught is equal to rho uh, f of z dz by z minus uh, z prime the whole square. So this is the this is the Cauchy integral formula. Okay, and the mind you the contour of integration is this outer this outer uh, circle uh, taken with the pos with the you know positive sense right and now the point is that uh, you have this 
but then uh, I want to ba basically what I am trying to show is that I am trying to show that in the smaller closed disk all the derivatives are bounded okay and uh, because all those derivatives are bounded in the smaller closed disk the family is equicontinuous okay. So all I am saying is that pick any point there is a small closed disk around that point where the family is equicontinuous and since the point that you picked was arbitrary this will tell you that the family is equicontinuous on all of D okay. So you get equicontinuity for free okay. And of course uh, the reason is because you have the Cauchy integral formula okay. Uh, so, uh, so what is this? So there is a mo modulus of this will be modulus of this and you know the modulus of the integral is less than or equal to the integral of the modulus it is less than or equal to the maximum uh, of the modulus of the integrand as the as the argument uh, variable of integration uh, varies over the region of integration multiplied by the length of the uh, the contour. So what I am going to get is I am going to get this is less than or equal to 1 by 2 pi uh, that is what I will get for this term outside 1 by 2 pi i and the length of this contour is going to be uh, 2 pi uh, uh, rho it is just a circle uh, radius rho alright and then uh, what about the integrand uh, the modulus uh, mod f is going to be bounded by m because mod f is al always bounded by m for all f uh, in the family script f okay. Uh, so mod f is going to be bounded by m so I can put this m here and uh, as far as the denominator is concerned you see look at this see the z is lying on the uh, re on the uh, contour of integration okay and uh, and I am I am my z prime is see my z prime is lying in the smaller disk so my z prime is here okay and the distance between z and z prime is therefore at least rho minus rho 1 okay. So mod mod z minus z prime uh, uh, is greater than or equal to rho minus rho 1 for uh, uh, mod z minus z naught is equal to rho okay. If you take uh, z on the outer circle then the distance from a point uh, to the inner circle has to be at least rho minus rho 1 which is the difference of the radii okay. The, the closest z prime can get to z is, 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 is along this radial line from z naught to z and that closest distance is rho minus rho 1 okay. So uh, you know why I need this inequality because now I want to uh, I have to invert the inequality uh, and then the, the direction of the inequality will change. So I will get 1 by mod z minus z prime the whole squared mod will be less than or equal to 1 by rho minus rho 1 the whole squared. So I, I can put a rho minus rho 1 the whole squared here okay. So finally I will end up with just m rho by rho minus rho 1 the whole squared okay. And this is a bound, uh, this is a bound, uh, so this is true, this is true for all f, all functions f in script f and for all uh, z prime. Uh, with uh, uh, lying in the inner disk mod z z prime uh, minus z naught uh, 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 less than or equal to rho one. Okay, so this happens. So, so in some in some what have we shown? We have just shown that the modulus of the derivatives of all your functions uh, inside uh, uh, close in a smaller closed disk they are all uniformly bounded by this constant. Okay. And this constant has got nothing to do with uh, 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 any particular point. See this constant that I have got on the right side is m rho by rho minus rho on the whole squared. That has got nothing to do with the point z prime except that the z prime should lie inside this in smaller disk and it has got nothing to do with also the function f that I chose from the family. So it is a uniform constant okay. So what you have shown is that the uh, because of analyticity the functions the derivatives are bounded. Now because the derivatives are bounded you get equicontinuity. And how is that? You get that by actually uh, integrating these functions. Uh, so uh, well, you know, if if I had taken so so for uh, if I if I take two points z1 and z2 uh, with uh, 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 mod z1 mod zi minus z0 less than or equal to rho 1. That is, if you take two points in this smaller closed disk, okay? You take two points z1 and z2 in this smaller closed disk, uh, then uh, if you f z1 minus f z2 is nothing but the result of integrating from z1 to z2 of f dash of z dz okay. This is because of just because of this fundamental theorem of integral calculus the moment the function has an antiderivative then the integral uh, is just the difference of evaluation of the function at the final and initial points okay. So uh, you have this 
But of course, the path of integration here uh, really does not matter so long as the path lies inside this closed disk and uh, 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 and it is uh, uh, well you know uh, I am taking the path to be the straight line segment from Z1 to Z2. If I take that straight line segment path then what will happen is that well uh, 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 the, the I, if I put a mod to this I will get this is less than or equal to uh, mod f dash of z okay which is now I have got a bound for that and mind you this z is lying uh, on the path of integration and it therefore uh, it is inside this smaller closed disk. So this bound applies so I will get this m rho by rho minus rho 1 the whole squared uh, a, this is the bound for uh, f dash of z okay and uh, the, the length of uh, this uh, contour from Z1 to Z2 is just the length of the line segment from Z1 to Z2 that I am choosing and so it will be a mod Z1 minus Z2. This is what I get okay. So now that is it this gives me equicontinuity because uh, so uh, for uh, epsilon greater than 0 choose uh, delta to be less than you know what to do you have to choose it to be less than rho minus rho 1 the whole squared by m rho uh, uh, times uh, uh, epsilon you choose this okay. Uh, then uh, mod z1 minus z2 uh, less than delta uh, will imply that mod fz1 minus fz2 uh, will be less than you look at this quantity uh, I have to replace this mod z1 uh, minus z2 by uh, uh, the bigger quantity uh, rho minus rho 1 the whole squared by m rho epsilon okay and I will get less than epsilon. Okay. So basically uh, 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 this is true for all Z1 and Z2 uh, inside uh, mod Z minus Z1 mod Z minus Z0 less than or equal to rho 1 okay. So what you have shown is that given any 2 points uh, the moment 2 points inside the smaller closed disk are uh, uh, lesser than delta the function values are lesser than epsilon and this works for any 2 points and for any function so you have shown a kind of uh, you have kind you have shown a uniform equicontinuity of the family inside this smaller closed disk okay. So uh, thus uh, script f is equicontinuous uh, in in inside uh, mod z my z0 in the smaller closed disk uh, since z0 was arbitrary f is equicontinuous on d. So I am writing e q e c t s for equicontinuous on d. So, uh, so this is the important point I mean this is the distinguishing feature between Montel's theorem and arzela ascoli theorem in philosophy while in the arzela ascoli theorem you need equicontinuity in the Montel theorem you get equicontinuity for free because you are already working with analytic functions and you uh, and uh, so so the, the, the moral of the story is if you have a uniform bound for your functions that gives rise to a uniform bound for the derivatives okay that is because of the Cauchy integral formula and estimation and the uniform bound for the derivatives gives you equicontinuity for the original functions. So just the uniform boundedness of the original functions for analytic functions is enough to give you equicontinuity also okay. So you are in now we are now in good shape now now you see now I can actually apply the arzela ascoli theorem for example on this uh, if I take any you take any compact subset of D okay take any compact subset of D uh, then uh, the, you, these uh, these continuous functions uh, will restrict to continuous functions on that compact set of course okay any continuous function uh, on a topological space if you restrict it to a subspace it will remain continuous if you take for the subspace the subspace topology okay. So if you take a compact subset of the uh, of D if you restrict these uh, this family of functions you are going to get continuous complex valued functions on that compact set and uh, they are also going to be equicontinuous because we already checked equicontinuity alright. So, uh, uh, and mind you you all you all already assumed that the family is normally bounded normally uniformly bounded therefore they are also going to be uh, uniformly bounded on that compact set therefore the usual arzela ascoli theorem applies and given any sequence I can extract a subsequence okay. So I have brought myself into the purview of applying the usual arzela ascoli theorem okay. So let me write that down uh, thus 
uh, for any compact set for any compact subset uh, k in D uh, 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 the Arzela Ascoli theorem theorem applies uh, to give a convergent subsequence uh, for uh, any given sequence in script f ok. So, you are uh, able to apply the Arzela Ascoli theorem, but you are still we, but we are still not we are we, I must say we are only halfway through the Montel theorem. See there is a small set again there is a small subtlety that you have to notice. What have we achieved so far? Give me a compact set k, suppose I start with a sequence in the family f, give me a compact set k I will be able to get a convergent subsequence. But you see if I change the compact set I may get a different convergent subsequence ok. Whereas what does the Montel theorem say? The Montel theorem says you start with a sequence you can get a subsequence the same subsequence which will work on every compact set you see that is the subtle difference. So, we are halfway through we are for given a sequence in f in the, fa in the family script f you can always extract a subsequence which converges on that compact set. But if you change the compact set the subsequence can change what Montel theorem promises is one subsequence that will work for all compact sets. Okay. And the way to get that is, is it is a very very clever thing it is again a diagonalization argument ok. If you go back to the Arzela Ascoli theorem we use a diagonal diagonalization argument actually in the proof of the Arzela Ascoli theorem one way where we assume where we tried to show that you know if a family is equicontinuous and uh, uniformly bounded then it is uh, sequentially compact or compact. So, what we did was we started we we took a family of continuous functions in your fam in that family and we tried to extract a convergent subsequence but since we were in a close sub space we just contented ourselves with extracting a cauchy subsequence okay but uh, the point is how did you get this cauchy subsequence uh, we knew that the metric space was uh, on which the functions is were defined was compact so we knew it's separable so we took a separable dense subset we took a countable subset of points x1, x2, x3 and so on which is dense and then what we did was we took this sequence first applied it to x1 ok and by boundedness this gave you a subsequence of functions which converged at x1 and then we applied that subsequence of functions to x2 ok and again being bounded we got a further subsequence which converged at x2 and then we did this process ad infinitum ok we got a matrix of uh, functions and then we took the diagonal sequence and that diagonal sequence uh, was a sequence of functions that converged on this countable dense subset and then we used equicontinuity to interpolate and, and, and to conclude that therefore this diagonal sequence converges on all of x and uniformly ok that is so this is you see the same kind of diagonalization argument we will use now ok and the uh, so uh, uh, and the key to that is that is a, is a, is a special construction what you do is that you construct a sequence of increasing sequence of compact sets which fill out uh, your domain t ok. Uh, so, it is it is more like you know if your domain d for example is a whole complex plane ok the an increasing sequence of compact sets which fills out the complex complex plane will be just a sequence of disks closed disks of increasing radii ok. So, it is just that but you will have to take care about the boundary ok. So, we will do that. So, so let me write this down uh, uh, note that uh, 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 this uh, convergent subsequence could change if k were changed, uh, but Montel theorem theorem promises a single uh, subsequence that converges uniformly on 
any compact subset. Okay, so that's the subtle difference. So what we'll do is that so I, I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to look at these sets D n. So here is my so here is my set D n. Here here is how I define it. It is a set of all points in D with the following property. Mod z is less than or equal to n. Okay, so it's a subset of uh, the closed disk centered at the origin radius n. All right. So it's a anyway it's that the, this first condition tells you that each dn is automatically bounded because there is this bound. All right. And then and here is a second condition which is uh, uh, the distance from z to the boundary is at least one by n. Okay. So it's a it's a rather uh, 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 you know it's it's a rather uh, a nice condition okay so what i want you to note uh, note is that you know uh, uh, there are only two essentially two cases you have to understand see if dou d is empty what does it mean if dou d is empty it means d is the whole space okay dou d can be empty only if and only if d is the whole space because you know after all dou d put together dou d is the boundary of d dou d and that's a closed set you know if you take dou d and take the union with d you get d closure okay therefore dou d being empty is the same as d equal to d closure but if d is equal to d closure you are saying d is closed but d is already open d is both open and closed okay therefore and if it is non empty it has to be the whole space because the whole space is connected okay so the only uh, so the situation that dou d is empty corresponds to d is the whole uh, complex plane okay that means actually you are looking at a family of entire functions okay and in that case uh, uh, this dn is just the uh, sequence of disks uh, uh, of increasing radius okay and this condition will become useless the distance between d z and dou d uh, is greater than or equal to 1 by n uh, is 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 superfluous okay Bec uh, I, I, you write this condition uh, only uh, when uh, it makes sense only when dou d is non empty okay if dou d is empty if you want uh, define the distance to be infinity so that infinity is always greater than or equal to 1 by n okay if you want but write think of this condition only when dou d is non empty okay so uh, so you know what is what is it that you are doing the, the reason why we put this condition is because you know uh, you cannot include everything in d okay uh, if you try to include everything in d uh, you will you will you will have issues if you try to uh, because d is open okay because d is open uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the re i want all these dns to be compact okay so the the, the fact is that uh, d is actually the union of all these dns d is the union of all these dns this is one the second thing uh, or rather facts the second thing is dn is compact for every for each n that is the second condition and the third this is the very important condition any compact subset is contained in some dn and any compact subset k of d is contained in some dn so this is the this is the beauty about this collection dn and you see it is this compactness that I am worried about see each dn is automatically bounded there is no problem about that each dn is automatically bounded so the only thing that prevents it from being compact is for it not being closed okay if each dn if you check that each dn is also bound is also closed then each dn will become both closed and bounded so it will become compact okay now the big deal is uh, it is for making sure that each dn is closed that I have put this extra condition that d distance of z to dou d is greater than or equal to 1 by n that is the that is the reason I have put it put that is because you see suppose my region is just unit disk suppose d is just the unit disk okay suppose d is just set of all z such that mod z less than 1 okay then what is d1 d1 is d what is d1 is set of all points which is whose modulus is less than or equal to 1 okay uh, that is if I if I forget the other condition okay forget the second condition that the distance from 
the point to the boundary of D is greater than or equal to 1 by n. Suppose I do not put that condition and if D is the unit disc then D1 is D. So D1 becomes the unit disc and it is not compact because it is not closed okay. So therefore it is for the closeness of each Dn that you put this extra condition the distance you are you are you are you are throwing away part of the boundary uh, okay you are you are throwing you are taking points from a certain particular distance 1 by n from that boundary and you are not allowing points to go very close to the boundary you allow up to a certain distance minimum uh, distance which is 1 by n and that condition makes each Dn closed. I mean that is the significance of this condition that I have circled okay. So if you draw a diagram uh, you know it is more like this it is like uh, you know uh, so uh, here so let, let me draw some somewhere here. So you know suppose this is the plane and uh, uh, suppose your suppose this is your domain D alright then you know what is D1? D1 is all those points which are lying in the uh, so, so let me draw this. Uh, this is too big, uh, let me get rid of this, oops. So you know, uh, so so this, these are all the points in the unit circle, okay. This is mod z less than or equal to 1 uh, and so I will also include the boundary because I have allowed less than or equal to 1, okay. And if I and then I am looking at all those uh, 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 points of, uh, of D uh, whose distance from uh, uh, I, I think I will have to slightly modify this diagram so that I get a non empty set. So let me draw something like this okay. So suppose this is my uh, so this is my suppose this is my uh, suppose this is my D okay and mind you uh, the D does not contain the boundary. So you know uh, I, I should redraw this I should draw it like this. So, so this is my dou D this is the boundary of D okay. It is like uh, it is like a half plane except that the boundary is not a line if you want okay. Now what is D1? D1 is all those points uh, lying in the closed unit disc okay whose distance from this boundary is at least 1. So if you actually calculate it you see what you will get is you will get this. So with this distance 1 okay this will be D1. This is what D1 will be okay. And uh, and this boundary is included okay because these are the points whose distance from the boundary dou D is, is at least 1 and points less than with distance less than 1 are all not included okay. So this is D1 if I, I, I next you know you, you if you if you take D2 okay then what will you get so I have this disc now this is a bigger disc radius 2 alright. And what am I going to get? I am going to look at all those points inside this closed disc uh, also for which the distance from the boundary is greater than or equal to half now okay. So what I will get is I will get this, I will get this. So basically I will get I will get this, 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 this region that I have shaded with vertical lines that is going to be D2 okay. So like this you, you can see that these on the one hand the D the D ends are becoming bigger and bigger so as to cover D on the other hand they are coming closer and closer to the boundary of D so that you do not lose any points very close to the boundary okay this is what is happening. But the, the but keeping all the D ends away from the boundary by a distance of 1 by n is the condition to make them a closed subset make each of these closed. Okay. So that is the reason uh, each dn is therefore closed and bounded uh, so each dn is compact and the union of all the dns is d okay. So you can you can make this uh, you, you can write out all the details uh, basically using properties of the, the fact you basically using the fact that you know the distance function the metric function is a continuous function that is what you have to use if you if you, you write down everything in detail okay. The distance function is always a continuous function so you have to use that alright. Uh, uh, and you can you can see several things it is very clear that all the dns will cover d okay because you give me uh, any point of d okay it, ha it has to lie in some big enough closed disc some mod z less than or equal to n okay and if the point is uh, and it has to be at some distance away from the boundary because d does not contain its boundary it is an open set. So every point in d has to be away from the boundary 
So you can always find every point of D in some DN. Okay. So the union of all the DNs cover D. Okay. And all the DNs are compact. And what is more beautiful is you give me a compact subset of D. If you take a compact subset of D, such a compact subset will be in some uh, uh, DN certainly. Because it will be contained in some big enough closed disk. Okay. And it will have, because it is compact, its distance from the boundary of D will be some finite quantity. Okay. So it will be contained in Dn for n sufficiently large. So uh, given any compact subset of D, it has to be contained in Dn for some sufficiently large n. Okay. Therefore the beauty is that you have constructed this increasing sequence of compact subsets which cover the whole of D. And now comes the trick, what you do is each of these, for each of these subsets you can apply the Arzela Ascoli theorem. Okay. And then use a diagonalization argument and pick out a diagonal uh, subsequence which will now converge on all uh, on all compact subsets of uh, D. And that is the sequence that is promised by Montel's theorem. So that is what I am going to write down. So, uh, 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 so let me write this down. Um, let, let us go, uh, okay, so, so let me write it here. Uh, 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 let, uh, 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 so, let f, uh, let f1, f2, etc. be a sequence in script f and uh, uh, apply the Arzela Ascoli theorem to extract a yeah, convergent uh, subsequence on uh, D1. Okay. Mind you, D1 is a compact set. Okay, it's a compact subset of D. So on D1. Uh, it is a compact subset, so it is a compact matrix space and therefore you know I can apply uh, the Arzela Ascoli theorem and on D1 I can get a convergent subsequence by and here when I say convergent subsequence is con uniformly convergent okay, because uh, it is convergence in the space of functions. So uh, extract a, uh, so here let me put uniformly okay. So, so we will call that subsequence as F11, F12, F13. Now you see that uh, 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 you are you are in the diagonalization business. Okay. Now what will you do? Now you take this subsequence f11, f12, f13, and again apply the Arzela Ascoli theorem to get another subsequence which will converge uniformly on D2, and call that as f21, f22, f23. Okay, and proceed in this manner. And then you take the diagonal sequence. The diagonal sequence will be a subsequence of the original sequence which will converge on all D, which will converge compactly. Uh, which will converge uniformly on all Dns and since any compact subset of D is contained in some Dn therefore it will also converge uniformly on all compact subsets of D and I am done. Okay. So that is the trick. So let me write that down. Uh, 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 again uh, apply the Erzil Ascoli theorem theorem to extract uh, yeah, subsequence f two two, f two one, that converges uniformly on D two. Okay. Uh, continue this way. to get uh, f n 1, f n 2 that converges uh, uniformly on I should say d 1, d 2, etcetera, d n. So in fact I should not put comma, I mean instead of putting comma I can actually put union. 
union uh, d i i equal to 1 to n ok. And uh, that is it, uh, so, so, so we, are, we are in the following situation, uh, so you have the origin, so you have this original sequence f1, f2 and so on, then you have this uh, f11, f12 and so on. This is, uh, this is subsequence and the point is, is converges uniformly on D1 and then you have F21, F22 and so on. This is also a subsequence, this that converges uniformly on D2 and D1. So, so that is uh, D1 union D, D2, okay and you go like this ad infinitum, you end up with f n 1, f n 2 uh, that converges uniformly on uh, union i equal to 1 to n d i, okay. Uh, the, then uh, uh, the subsequence, the diagonal subsequence, so this is a diagonal trick, the diagonal subsequence f 1 1, f 2 2, f 3 3 uh, converges uniformly on compact subsets of uh, D. That is and that, that finishes the proof of the, of course I, I, uh, I must tell you that uh, uh, D 1 union D 2 is just D 2, okay, because D 2 is bigger than and, and this union i equal to 1 to n D i is just D n actually. Each d i includes the uh, d j's for j less than i, because it is an increasing collection of uh, compact sets, okay. And any compact subset of d uh, is contained in one of the d j's, okay. And therefore, this diagonal subsequence uh, will co converge uniformly on that compact set. So, uh, starting with uh, starting with a sequence of analytic functions defined on the domain d, okay, uh, just putting the condition that this analytic, this sequence is uniformly bounded on compact subsets of D, namely that is normally uniformly bounded, just that condition is good enough to guarantee that uh, you get compactness in the sense that any sequence uh, 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 from this family uh, will uh, 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 admit a convergent subsequence and, and that is the point of Montel's theorem, okay. So, what we will need to do is that we will have to, you see somehow the derivatives are entering into the picture and the trick is that do you want to extend this to meromorphic functions, but you know for meromorphic functions derivatives are not defined at the poles, but then we have replacement for that, we have the spherical derivatives. So, the trick is that you try to get another version of this Montel theorem which will work for meromorphic functions and you try to use a spherical derivative and still everything works, okay. So, you get a Montel's theorem for meromorphic functions. And that is what we are going to do next, because finally we have to worry about meromorphic functions for the proof of the Picard theorem.